Okay, so um, I'll be talking today about um, uh, some recent exciting news, especially on the observational side, uh, where the existence of the multiverse is concerned. Planck has spoken. Planck was launched in 2009, and um, it was meant to improve uh, upon previous findings from uh, WMAP, which was another satellite that was designed to uh, look for the cosmic microwave background. Now, the cosmic microwave background is uh, one of the strongest tools we have in uh, studying the very early universe because it, it's a direct relic of the Big Bang. And it's everywhere around us today in the sky. Uh, of course, at, at uh, present, the temperature of, of the photons that make up the microwave background in the sky is very low because the universe has grown large and therefore those photons have redshifted. But uh, all of those, uh, all that microwave background originates from the time when the universe went through Big Bang inflation, and as is uh, uh, always the case, um, um, quant uh, quantum fluctuations are produced immediately in, in the metric of space-time, and also in that particle, in that primordial particle that we call the inflaton field. Uh, as the universe cools down, of course, um, many of those uh, uh, primordial fluctuations, especially the, the short distance ones, will collapse under their own self-gravitational uh, forces and create structure, uh, stars, galaxies, clusters of galaxies, eventually and ultimately us. That, that's why we are here today. However, the leftover remains as, as part of the microwave background. And, and that is the reason why so many uh, experiments and satellites have been devoted to studying that microwave background. As uh, I'm sure you all um, um, are familiar with, um, our standard model of cosmology says that the universe started with some particle known as the inflaton field that was at very high energies, and, and uh, that the energy of that particle propelled that initial small universe into an accelerated expansion. And, and uh, in other words, the universe went through a Big Bang phase and, and it grew quite large, quite fast. The, the observational test of, of that theory, known as inflation, uh, one of the observational tests is the microwave background. If that story is correct, which, which it seems to, to be correct because it's in exquisite agreement with all the data we have so far in cosmology, but if that story is correct, what we expect to see in the sky today, all, all those photons lurking around, and, and all the structure distributed in the universe. Since all of those effects, including um, structure formation, originate from that, from fluctuations of that initial inflaton field, then what we expect to see today is a very homogeneous and, and uniform distribution of whether it's structure or the microwave background. We, we expect all the features around the sky to, to be uh, spread homogeneously and uniformly. It doesn't matter whether I look on this direction in the sky or in another direction, the sky should look the same. That, that's one of the powerful predictions of, of uh, Big Bang cosmology, of, of the inflationary theory. And, and Planck, of course, was uh, uh, the satellite was designed to go after the microwave background and check exactly for, for that uniformity and, and homogeneity of uh, the distribution of, of the microwave background. And, and that was the most interesting uh, finding of all. What Planck found is that indeed at short scales, now I'm talking in uh, terms of cosmological scales, so by short I mean 100 megaparsec or 200 megaparsec, the size of a galaxy. So in, in those scales, uh, indeed Planck and WMAP previously found an exquisite agreement of what our standard model of cosmology says and what they observed. Everything is distributed uniformly, and uh, it's homogeneous everywhere in the sky. Uh, the, the temperature of the microwave background is pretty much the same everywhere. The, the hot and the cold regions that, that Planck was measuring, they are also distributed homogeneously everywhere. Now, let, let me um, make a caveat here. Whenever we are looking at an over-dense region in the sky, for example, a star, a galaxy, or, or a collection of, of such objects, massive objects, that will show up in a temperature map, that will show up as a hot spot. Wherever you have a concentration of mass, that region is hot. If, if there is emptiness, like the space between galaxies, that will show up as, as a cold area in, in the temperature map of the sky. And, and that's what Planck was, was uh, taking a snapshot of, this hot and cold spots, the distribution of the hot and cold spots. 
What they discovered is that at these short and intermediate scales, indeed everything looks uniformly and homogeneously distributed, as, as we expected and as it should be. And, and that's a major success of our standard model of cosmology. What they discovered, which, which makes their findings incredibly interesting, is that this story changes drastically at the largest possible scales. If we are looking at scales of, say, the size of the universe, known as the horizon scale, or, or even shorter scales, but something a distance comparable to, to the size of the universe, then the uh, homogeneity and the uniformity of the microwave background sky seems to be broken. And, and that was one of the most important findings of the century. It was a spectacular discovery. It, it had been previously, of course, uh, seen by uh, the WMAP, the previous satellite experiment, and even COBE over uh, two decades ago. However, uh, first of all, our statistics and technology were not good enough for us to um, be able to, to tell that what we are looking at is not an anomaly, that comes from nature, but it, it's a statistical fluke or, or a problem with the instrumentation. Planck was quite advanced and sophisticated in, in terms of uh, those problems, te uh, technology problems and statistical problems. They, they had a lot more data so they could carry out better analysis and therefore they confirmed whatever they found. Nobody could question or doubt that that effect, that anomaly observed at the larger scales might be due to something else, like a statistical fluke. And, and that's why the, the discoveries that Planck made on, at those scales are extremely important. And they relate, theoretically, to a uh, very complex but rich new concept emerging in physics. And I should be very careful when I use the word new, because historians of science know that the idea contemplating the possibility that there might be more than one universe and, and probably an infinite number of, of other stuff out there, other universes or domains or whatnot. That possibility has been contemplated for the last 2,000 years, from um, simple ideas to um, philosophical ideas to scientific ideas. However, it was one of the, the existence, the possible existence of a multiverse was one of those questions that was considered to be in bad taste in, in physics until quite recently. Many of you probably have heard of uh, Hugh Everett and, and what he went through as a pioneer for suggesting that the existence of multiple universes is a real physical possibility. He, he was writing his thesis at, uh, with John Wheeler in uh, Princeton and he was studying quantum mechanics. So he discovered that if you follow quantum mechanics um, word by word, then it leads you to the conclusion that you do not end up with one universe. If you solve for a wave function of the universe, uh, quantum mechanically, you don't end up with just one, but you end up with an infinite amount of universes. So Everett was the first one to have the courage and say, well, there, there is no criteria, no physical criteria why I, out of that, whole array of mathematical solutions, I should say I like only that one and throw away the rest. So he provided an equal footing in terms of existence of uh, mathematical solutions being mapped to physical realities. And, and of course he paid the price for that. Uh, very few people heard about this for uh, 50 years. And quite recently, the multiverse field has, has re-emerged as, as this uh, very interesting field and, and quite likely the, the future of uh, theoretical and observational physics. The reason for this emergence of, of uh, the multiverse 50 years after Everett um, is related to technological advances and, and uh, experiments like Planck, for example. We, we may argue about our theoretical taste, but we can never argue about data. Data is data, so whatever an experiment finds, we have to take that possibility seriously. And that has happened in science more than once. Dark energy is another example of that happening. However, um, besides the, the experimental findings of, uh, for example, WMAP findings, that something is very strange with our universe at the largest scales. Something else might be at, at play there. So besides those experimental findings, there has been also a revolution in, in theoretical physics. Part of it is related to um, recent discoveries uh, about uh, nine years ago in string theory. 
Now, we don't have an underlying theory of everything, but string theory is the closest we can get at the moment. Um, perhaps it's right or perhaps it's wrong.